Next month at a ranch in California, President Reagan will be host at the videotaping of a concert called In Performance at the White House. The concert will feature Merle Haggard, a former inmate of San Quentin Prison, whom Mr. Reagan pardoned when he was governor of California. A singer who has moved to the very summit of country music. And here with the remarkable story of Merle Haggard is Bob Brown. Bob? You, Merle Haggard has won almost every major award a country music entertainer can win. And 28 of his recordings have been number one on the country music sales charts. But of all the accomplishments any artist can claim, he has one that's unique. My name is Merle Haggard. This is my band, Strangers. And uh, I hope that we will be able to do something you'll enjoy hearing on your way to the moon. Someday. Merle Haggard has sung as an inmate in San Quentin prison and a guest in the White House, and by special request, even on a mission to the moon. He made a custom recording for the Apollo 16 crew on the request of astronaut Charles Duke, who, like millions of others, is a Haggard fan. We'll look back and say that a good time on the way to the moon, didn't Merle has always seemed to prefer out-of-the-way places, especially places where he can fish. There's a convenient pond on the estate where he lives with his third wife, singer Leona Williams, whom he detoured onto a fishing trip the day they were supposed to begin their honeymoon. Above the pond, there's a view of the Cascade Mountains from their hilltop home near Redding, California and it's a couple of hundred miles to the nearest big city, San Francisco. Been working every day since I was 20. Dallas would be the most desirable place employment-wise for me to live because it's centrally located. A lot of the people choose to live there that are in this business. But uh, I can order just about anything you got in the big city through the mail. <laughs> Turn me loose, set me free Somewhere in of and give me all I've got coming to me. Merle Haggard is a balladeer whose life and feelings are in his music, a troubadour of working people. But to people in the music industry, he is a giant not only because of the easygoing side of his style and his consistent popularity, but because of an intense feeling for history that has led him almost obsessively to track down the sources of American music and pay his respects to them in his performances. To Jimmy Rogers, one of the fathers of country music. To song stylist Lefty Frizzell. And to Bob Wills, whose style of Western swing music and fiddle breakdowns could make a room full of drunks forget about fighting. And so the Merle Haggard who loves the peace and solitude of the country is the same Merle Haggard who keeps the gears turning beneath his steady composure, whose intensity about his music once kept him up for 48 hours just to play the fiddle. Do you think it's possible to be too intense about things? I've never had that problem. I, I've always been... Uh... <laughs> I know someone's looking at me in the room saying, no, I have had that problem too. <laughs> Yeah, I have. Strange how one day a period of your life can seem so bad, and then the next morning you wake up and you think, well, what was I so upset about? You know, what was it that got me down? You can't even find it. But, uh, that's the way I am. I'm, I'm uh, probably uh, as emotionally disturbed as anyone. <laughs> that's the way. Merle is a very insecure person, and he shouldn't be, but he is. Seems like he brings a lot of problems on his own self. And why, I don't know. Maybe it's from his uh, childhood days, you know. His daddy passed away when he was nine years old, and, and he had, uh, you know, all these problems in his own little mind. It's almost like sometimes he's mad at himself. Merle spent years trying to get over his father's death from a brain hemorrhage, mad at the elements, restless and rebellious despite his mother's patience. Well, the pressures of life, they got to be. And they got down deep in my soul. 
His father had been a railroad man in Bakersfield, California, helping inspire a fascination for trains you can hear in Merle's rhythms and lyrics. I'm gonna live out my days like a hobo. Take myself a long needed rest. I'm gonna get a ride on the freight train and be a good old American guest. He keeps a collection of precise scale models worth thousands of dollars in his home. Oh, I sometimes wish I was small enough to get in the cab there. But, uh, I'm gonna get a ride on a freight I, I, train. I, I, and even though he may have been born a few years too late for the Depression-era heyday of locomotives, he made up for lost time as a child by using his father's railroad pass and also hopping on illegally, testing his ability to ride like the hobos. From the age of 10, when he slipped onto a freight and was caught later by a railroad detective, Merle spent much of his time traveling, hopping trains, driving through the west and southwest with friends, it was a habit that continued well into his first marriage, leaving, often unannounced, returning the same way. His mother never understood what caused it, he said, and it was something he couldn't explain. It all stopped when Merle was locked up in San Quentin prison at the end of a string of petty crimes. I woke up one day and found myself in the midst of a life of crime, really, you know, and I decided, well, I might as well do it right. And uh, there were some guys who came through Bakersfield who were professional thieves and uh, I got with a couple of guys like that and we pulled some jobs and uh, I got stopped and uh, during a screwed up mess I got into one night I tried to break into a place that was, wasn't even closed and we, we were all drunk. And... Merle returned to San Quentin in 1971 to give a prison concert and to remember how he felt the day he walked in. 19 years old with a wife and one child and another on the way. Getting closer. Bring back some unpleasant memories. He served what became a two-year, nine-month sentence on burglary and escape charges. This area that we're coming up on here is the world-famous Big Yard. First, first day, first day I was here, it was raining, raining vertically underneath this shed. Wind blowing 80 miles an hour, and I was locked out of myself. One of his most vivid memories of San Quentin involved an escape by a friend of his nicknamed Rabbit, who had offered to bring Merle along on the escape attempt and then advised him against it, telling him that with his music, he had a future. He probably thought about it and thought, you know, it would really be a shame if I should choose to go with him and because I would wind up with a, what they call an ass full of time, you know, for no reason because I was young and was going to get out and could clean up my act and, you know, and go ahead and be a, a citizen. Rabbit did escape but he killed a law officer in a shootout and was returned to San Quentin and condemned to die. Despite what Rabbit had done, Merle remembered him as a friend who had encouraged him. Sing Me Back Home is a song Merle wrote because he thinks he knows how Rabbit felt the night he waited in his cell before he died in the gas chamber. Sing me back home With a song Sing me back home. Do you think of that? I try not to because I get emotional. I can't think about that and sing too, so you know, I just I try not to think about what it's really about. Sing me back home before I die. What did you get out of your experience in San Quentin? I learned many things there. You know, I learned a lot of things about honesty, believe it or not. In, in, in prison, you know, you you have a, a situations that arise in there where you must keep your word, and it becomes a habit. They know. tell me that there's only one thing stronger than country moonshine. That's country music. We'll now find out. Only 13 years after his parole from San Quentin, Merle found himself singing at the White House, 
wondering what Rabbit would have thought. His career had taken him from long shifts in California honky-tonks to a small recording deal that led to his first national hit in 1964. But this was the song that got everybody's attention. We don't smoke marijuana in Muskogee. Okie from Muskogee, released in 1969, with a message that some people felt played up tensions over the Vietnam War, while others felt the message was overdue. We don't burn rap cars down Main Street. Cause we like living right, being free. I think there was a lot of people had uh, second thoughts about me. I hear it was a guy who had been in prison and had every reason to put down the system. I may have lost some fans on that. There's really no way of telling. But uh, I think the amount gained was far more than one's lost. And we don't let our hair roll on nasty, filthy, and dirty. Like the hippies out in San Francisco do. And I'm proud to be an okay. Of the year for 1970. The country music male vocalist of the year. Single of the year, 1970. The country music entertainer of the year, 1970. Okie from the Okie from the Merle Haggard. Oh, again. Merle Haggard. Merle Haggard. Merle hit a grand slam. Four major country music awards for Okie from Muskogee and the notoriety it received overshadowed the rest of his music for a while. But he doesn't shy away from strong lyrical themes in his songs. I'll be rolling down hill like a snowball headed for hell. They are often themes that wonder whether some things are lost forever, things people felt inside, and things they could touch and work with and count on in their lives, practical dreams and everyday wishes. Wish a Ford and a Chevy would still last ten years like they should. It's the best of the free life behind us now. The good times really over for good. And there are other changes that are more difficult to define came out of what I diagnosed as the change of life. And like somebody said, I thought maybe they would make an exception in my part, but they're not going to. You mentioned the, uh, the change of life period. Uh, what was that like for you? Things that you've uh, enjoyed for years or don't seem nearly as important. And, uh, and uh, you're at, at war with yourself as to what's happening. Why, why don't I like that anymore? Why do I like this now? And, and uh, finally, uh, I think you actually go through a biological change. You know, you, you just uh, become another, your body's getting ready to die and, uh, and your mind doesn't agree. If change is inevitable, compromise doesn't necessarily follow. You can hear the care in quiet moments when Merle begins to explore a song with other musicians in a recording studio. Learning chords and guitar rhythm, singing blues and living with them, doing every song Dylan writes. We call it a circle of communication. We don't have to say anything. We can almost read each other's minds. Learning chords and guitar rhythm, singing blues and living with them, doing every song Dylan writes. His intensity also touches the musicians who back him up, who help accompany the personal history that is in his lyrics, songs that are strung together like the places on a road map to tell his story. Rhinestone guitar cases, honky-tonks and army bases, trying to keep my name up there in lights. Learning chords and guitar rhythm, singing blues and living with them. Singing every song, God let me write Cause I'm a troubadour I'm a troubadour You can see on his face that he likes what he's doing And you can sense that the restlessness that once almost towed him under helps give his music a kind of buoyancy He will go back home to the mountains to fish on Lake Shasta when it's over and he has thought about staying there but in the back of his mind, the gears are still turning. 
You know, you have these turns and corners in life, and uh, some people are not that lucky to come around those corners so well. Those are moments that are hard to deal with in everybody's life, and, uh, and you have to be careful, and uh, you have to be lucky. What do you think has made the difference for you in the long run? Desire. I'm laying back and trying. He acknowledges luck, but he says it's desire that made the difference. He has a lot of both. Fascinating. Thank you, Bob.